New Orleans has had a basketball team since 2002. And the truth is, is that they've had a basketball team before that, but that team, they kind of left us. They kind of left New Orleans behind. And what was an interesting move to Utah, not only did Utah take the New Orleans team, the Jazz, they also took the name, the Jazz. Hey, to be fair, I guess New Orleans did take the Hornets name, but then they gave it back. As a New Orleans basketball fan, I don't exactly love the name the Pelicans, but hey, it's all we got. And sometimes you have to make the best out of the hand you're dealt. And on December 14th, 2011, the New Orleans Hornets would do exactly that. Though New Orleans tried to trade Chris Paul at an earlier time to the Los Angeles Lakers, David Stern wasn't letting it happen. It sucks that it didn't happen, but we can imagine, right? Chris Paul gets his ring and Kobe builds on a legacy of being one of the most dominant and best shooting guards of all time. Anyways, the trade falls through for basketball reasons. Chris Paul's trade demand struck me like nothing I had ever seen before. While the New Orleans franchise had seen great players come and go before, we hadn't seen anybody quite like Chris Paul. He was without a doubt the best player in the franchise's young history, at least in New Orleans. And yes, unfortunately, I have to call players like Baron Davis great because Baron Davis absolutely hated New Orleans. But hey, Prime B. Diddy, he was a beast. Chris Paul and David West, a duo that was supposed to retire in New Orleans. 07, 08. Chris Paul, David West, Tyson Chandler, the team is absolutely phenomenal. They finished second in the Western Conference and CP3, he was almost the MVP, falling short to only Kobe Bryant. Leading up to 2011, the ownership situation would get worse and worse for the New Orleans Pelicans. But where there was trouble in paradise in New Orleans, Los Angeles, they saw opportunity. The Clippers were a young, explosive team. They had talent. They just needed somebody to put it all together. And on December 14th, 2011, they would get their guy. They would acquire the four-time NBA All-Star, Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan. You know how the story goes. Who wants a free Sharpie? Are you serious? Oh my God. When Blake and DeAndre found out about the trade during media day, they officially declared Lob City. Over the years, the Clippers have become a franchise that became all too familiar with losing. Quite the opposite of their Los Angeles counterpart and rival. It's easy to forget at times how bad those Clippers teams really were. And of course, how bad the management actually was. Since 1976-1977, the franchise had only made it to the playoffs four times. And out of the first round, once. The team never made it to the Western Conference Finals. The Clippers would trade Eric Gordon, Chris Kamen, Al Farouk Aminu, and a first round pick. To this day, you can't tell me that without the injuries, Eric Gordon wasn't going to be a superstar. He was an ascending scoring talent that had absolutely lit up college basketball. Oh yeah, and he tried to bolt to Phoenix. The Crescent City couldn't get any love, but with the arrival of Chris Paul in Los Angeles, love was all too familiar in Staples Center. And this franchise that had been a perpetual loser was ready to win. The number one pick of the 2009 NBA draft, Blake Griffin, absolute beast. But in 2009, he wasn't a rookie. He was forced to sit out a year after suffering a stress fracture in his left knee. But boy, did he more than make up for his time that he missed. In 2010, 2011, he played all 82 games. Homie was even selected to the NBA All-Star Game and won the Sprite Slam Dunk competition. You can call it controversial while he calls it a victory, but it's a victory all the same. Sorry, Aaron Gordon. Unanimously, Blake Griffin was the Rookie of the Year, and he was also a double-double machine. Did I mention he was the first rookie to score over 40 points in two games since Allen Iverson? Hey man, if y'all don't remember how cold Iverson was, I'm gonna save that for another video. Back to Blake. 22.5 points over 12 boards per game and nearly four assists and i haven't even mentioned the dunks or the highlights because there were a lot speaking of buckets in 2012 2013 the clippers would sign jamal crawford you want to talk about instant offense jamal crawford was exactly that but the 2012 2013 season the clippers would go on to lose in the first round but i mean hey they won 50 games for the first time in franchise history and they would finish as the fourth seed in the Western Conference. 
This was a Clippers team that had Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, Karan Butler, Chauncey Billups, Matt Barnes, Jamal Crawford, Eric Bledsoe, Lamar Odom, and Dronny Turiaf. I'm sure you guys are wondering what happened. The Grizzlies, they were a tough team. A team nobody in the playoffs wanted to face. They had a reputation that they lived up to. And Blake Griffin, he would suffer an injury that affected his play so much, he just didn't look like Blake Griffin. To be fair, the Grizzlies, they hooped. They balled so hard, they didn't just make the Clippers go out and get a new coach. They would trade for one. The Clippers would send two first round picks to the Boston Celtics for head coach Doc Rivers. This is a move that I could say, I don't think I'd ever seen before or saw coming. Doc had the hardware and his reputation exceeded him. He knew how to get the best out of talent. I think as NBA fans, people take some great coaches for granted. When a team is really talented, it's really easy, right? To be fair, it can be, but that just leaves so much room for any slight thing to go wrong. When a team is so talented, you're constantly on the hot seat. You have egos and you have to make sure these players are playing up to their potential because if you aren't, then you're out of there. Before the 13-14 season, the Clippers would also add JJ Redick and Jared Dudley. Great additions. JJ Redick was so good for this Clippers team. His constant movement and sharp shooting kept teams on their toes. And if nothing else, it opened up the floor and forced you to play honest. Were you really going to leave JJ Redick open from the three-point line? I didn't think so. The 2013-2014 season, the Clippers would win a franchise best 57 games. These guys had just won 50. They were hot. Their offense was polarizing and Lob City was reaching new heights. It was one of the best tickets in the NBA. The Clippers would round out their roster with Hito Turkoglu, Big Baby, Danny Granger, and oh yeah, DeAndre Jordan would lead the league in rebounding with 13.6 per game. Blake and CP3, these guys were doing all NBA things. Oh yeah, and Chris Paul also led the league in assists and steals. In the first round, the Clippers would play the Golden State Warriors, who took them all the way to seven games. This Warriors team, well, you know what they become. Yeah, one of the greatest teams to ever play. The team at the time consisted of David Lee, Draymond Green, Steph Curry, Andre Iguodala, Klay Thompson, and Harrison Barnes. Oh yeah, and my guy Jermaine O'Neal was still hooping? Talk about a throwback. That might be a dedicated video on its own. Seven games, four wins, Clippers advance. Their stars played big and so did their supporting cast. And let's just say they had to. In the semis, Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, and DeAndre Jordan would face off against KD and Russell Westbrook. The Clippers simply didn't have an answer for Kevin Durant. And I mean, who really could? Seven foot, small forward, essentially. I know 6'10", 6'9", 6'11", whatever. I'm calling him seven foot. KD, one of the best scorers to ever play the game. Simply unguardable. He averaged 33.2 points per game this series. He grabbed nearly 10 boards. Man, don't get me started. But of course, the Clippers had to overcome much more than just the Oklahoma City Thunder. Their owner had been banned for life, and it was well-deserved. Sterling had a history of racism. 2014-2015, Steve Ballmer arrives, and he's all in. Chris Paul and Blake Griffin, they do their all NBA thing, but this time, DeAndre Jordan joins them. DJ also becomes the first player since Moses Malone to average 10 points, 15 rebounds, one steal, and two blocks. The Clippers would enter the playoffs as the third seed in the Western Conference with a 56 and 26 record. They would beat the defending champion Spurs in the first round after a game winning shot by CP3. Sorry, Kawhi. Next round, the Clippers go up on the Rockets 3 1, but they would lose the series. Houston took three straight games after Los Angeles flat out dominated them. Nobody saw it coming. CP3 would miss the first two games of the series, but that's no excuse. Hey, maybe nobody was beating the Warriors at this time anyways. But hey, I, it's crazy to say, and I know the Clippers had lost some depth. I think they were a good matchup. Would they have taken them down? Who knows? But it's fun to imagine. The following offseason, the Clippers would almost lose DeAndre Jordan. 
I mean, seriously. DJ was all but gone, and the stories surrounding the situation are kind of absurd. DJ has a change of heart. He doesn't end up in Dallas and Lob City. It returns. But things just keep getting worse and worse. Chris Paul would unfortunately break his hand, while Blake Griffin would re-injure his quad. All of this would add up to a 4-2 series win for the Portland Trailblazers. The team was loaded and ready. But hey, I guess sometimes things just don't go your way. If Blake Griffin and CP3 remained healthy, the Clippers, they had a path to the finals. The following offseason, the Clippers almost got KD? Question mark? It was reported that the Clippers meeting with Durant was intense, and at one point, Steve Ballmer was crying, but everyone grew closer and a big lesson was learned. You can't make this stuff up. Chris Paul, KD, DeAndre Jordan, Blake Griffin? I guess we gotta keep dreaming. 2016-2017 would be the final season for the Lob City Clippers. Clippers faced injury after injury with Blake Griffin and Chris Paul both missing significant time. In the playoffs, Blake Griffin would suffer a toe injury in game three and unfortunately miss the rest of the season. For three, New Orleans, oh my bad, Utah Jazz. As a Hornets fan, as a New Orleans sports fan, Chris Paul leaving New Orleans sucked because though he left, he did so much for the city. I've wanted to see Chris Paul win perhaps more than anything in the NBA. Blake Griffin, Chris Paul, DeAndre Jordan, all gone. Lob City, an era that I hope won't be forgotten. Because if nothing else, the ride was fun, while it lasted at least. Be sure to click the video on the screen right now, guys. Be sure to subscribe, notifications on. I'm G-Like Coop, and I'm out.